Good morning. This is uh, Thursday. It is May the 5th. I had to look because we're already into May. It's hard to believe and five days are gone. But we're looking into God's Word today and uh, I hope you have your Bibles with you. If you'll turn to Titus chapter 2, after we pray we're going to take a look at some uh, verses about sound doctrine. So let's begin with prayer today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to share the Word of God publicly. And I pray that those who hear it and who study it, Father, would be blessed today. <coughs> Father, that you would glorify yourself today. And Father, may your Word be used by your Spirit bring about conviction in our souls, to challenge us, to encourage us, to equip us, Father, to do your work in our lives, the work of salvation of faith in Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and the work of sanctification, of being molded into the image of Jesus Christ, to have the way we think and believe transformed by the truth of your word. May that happen today to all that hear. In Jesus' name, amen. you have to excuse me for a cough if now and then. It seems like at this time in my life, uh, when I do a lot of speaking, there's times when I have a tickle in my throat and it just comes upon me. Uh, and so I apologize for that. But as we look today, last week we looked at David and his life in firm faith. Trust in God in the midst of trials and tribulations and troubles. And that trust in God was based upon what he knew about God, what God had revealed to him, what he'd seen God do, what he'd heard from God as God spoke to his heart, his mind. That built this faith in David that he could trust God no matter what. Well, we have the same opportunity. His Spirit draws us to himself. His Spirit teaches us the Word of God and instructs us in righteousness and holiness. But we also have the printed Word of God, the Word that was inspired by the Holy Spirit upon men years and years ago who wrote down what the Holy Spirit had for them to say. And, and these words are, are, are in the Bible. That's, they make up the Bible. Um, and as we look into it, we actually see God revealing himself through the ages, revealing who he was to mankind in hopes that we would turn to him in love, seeking his mercy, because he created us in the beginning. And so as we look into this, there's a lot of videos like this and some more professionally done, some entertaining and interactive, uh, but it's the Word of God that we're trying to put out there. But you have to be careful. I want you to check up on me. I want you to read your Bible and look and see if what I share is not true. If it doesn't match up with the Bible, it's false teachings. And there's a lot of false teachings on the internet today and in pulpits today and in Bible studies today. So you have to be careful just because it has the stamp uh, Holy Bible on it or just because it has the stamp Christian on it doesn't necessarily make it so because Jesus warned us to be discerning because there are false prophets, false teachers out there that are teaching for their own gain and their own purpose. So check up on them. You have to read the Word of God yourself. And, and the, I'll share with you some reasons why today. But it, it's the revelation of God. And therefore, if we want to know Him and understand Him, the way He thinks, the way He operates, then we have to read and find out for ourselves. So let's take a look at Titus chapter 2. Paul is instructing Titus, a young a minister, uh, a young convert of Paul's, and he's instructing him, and he's, he's trying to disciple him and teach him 
how to minister and what to do. And we come to chapter 2 of Titus in verse 1. It says, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. A minister is only supposed to teach if he's a godly man, called of God, full of the Holy Spirit. He's only going to teach sound doctrine, sound teaching. Now the word doctrine just means teaching. He's going to teach what the apostles revealed. He's going to teach uh, what Peter, James, and John said, what the Gospels say. He's not going to go off on his own with his own agenda and his own opinion. He says, teach people what accords, what goes along with, what measures up with sound doctrine. Okay, stable doctrine, sure doctrine, true doctrine. And then in verse 7 through 10, Paul goes on about this. He said, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. We're supposed to be examples. Christians are light to the world and salt to the world. We're supposed to be examples of Jesus. He says, be a model of good works. Be found doing good for others. Be found being hospitable. Be found uh, uh, doing to help the poor and the needy and the helpless. He says, and in your teaching or doctrine, show integrity. The world's looking for integrity. Uh, they're not looking for the right kind of music. They're not looking for the right kind of service atmosphere. They're looking for integrity. And a lot of people won't go to a contemporary church because they don't see integrity. A lot of people won't go to a, a, a traditional church because they don't see integrity. They want integrity. They want to be able to trust what people are saying and who's saying it. They want to be able to see it and not just hear it. It says, let your doctrine show integrity, dignity, not silliness and childliness, dignity and sound speech that cannot be condemned. Let, let your doctrine, let nobody be able to come against you with a good argument about the doctrine you, you teach. Um, so that an opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering. Uh, you're supposed to be a good employee. You're supposed to be a model employee. Uh, you're not supposed to be shuffling off and, and, and being on your cell phone when you should be working or, or being taking too many breaks when you should be working. You should work as best you can, as hard you can, as if you're working for Jesus. Paul teaches us that. He's saying be a model employee. Be a model student. Be a model neighbor. Be a model wherever you find yourself. He says, uh, but showing all good faith so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine or teachings of God our Savior. If we live a a, a, a life that is uh, casual and lacking and slacking off and just drifting by, you know, and not doing a good job and, and not doing like we should, then people don't, they look at us and say, I don't, you know, there's no integrity here. I don't believe what they're saying. It's a bad reflection on Jesus. And so he's telling Titus here, you be a model. And teach others to be models by teaching sound doctrine. So in looking at sound doctrine, I'm not going to read all these verses. There's a lot of verses about doctrine in, in the Bible. But I'm just going to tell you where they are. You can write them down and look them up later. But in John chapter 7, verse 16 through 17, we'll see this about doctrine. According to Jesus, his sound doctrine, Jesus' sound teachings came from the Heavenly Father. Jesus said, I only speak what the Father tells me. My teachings come from him. They're not my own. In Matthew 7, 28 through 29, uh, we see that Jesus' sound doctrine uh, came from the Father. It carries the Father's authority. If it's from the Creator God, Yahweh, then it has all the authority of Yahweh standing behind it. If I get up and preach or teach what I think, 
or some flowery little message that I think will tickle the ears of the congregation. There's no authority in it because it didn't come from God. If I teach through a book off my shelf, that, can't, that isn't necessarily a bad thing if God leads me to do it. But if I just do that over and over and over again, then there's no authority in it. Then in Mark 1, 27 through 28, we see that this a doctrine from the Father is backed by his power. Not only does it have his authority, but it has his power. It is going to accomplish something. It's going to accomplish what God wants it to. Then in Acts 2, 42 through 43, we see that this doctrine, uh, if we're teaching, the church has to teach the pure word of God. We can't mix it with what men think. We can't mix it with psychology, sociology, uh, anything else, philosophy. It, we have to teach the pure word of God. And there are times there's some theology uh, which is wrong, and we can't mix theologies. It has to be the pure word of God. And if it's anything else, it's, uh, it's not worth teaching because it's going to lead away from God. You see, you've got to remember that uh, a half-truth is a lie. So if we mix the truth of God's Word with anything else, it becomes a lie. And we can't do that. Now, I am going to read these verses. In Deuteronomy 32, verses 2 through 3, it says, May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. Sound doctrine is gentle. Yes, conviction hurts. Yes, reproof hurts. Yes, correction hurts. But it's gentle. It's like a surgeon with his, his scalpel. He gently cuts into the tissue of, of the person that he's operating on. The Holy Spirit gently cuts into our heart and into our minds, removing what needs to be removed and putting in what needs to be put in. It's gentle. Then in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, we see, What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, an interpretation. Let all things be done for the building up. The lesson, doctrine, teaching, let it be for building up, not tearing down. We're supposed to be building up the body of Christ. We're supposed to be edifying one another. Uh, and so the Word of God is supposed to edify the body of Christ, those listening. 1 Timothy 6.3 says, If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the teaching that accords with godliness. Our, our sound doctrine produces godliness in one's life, produces Christ-likeness. When they hear the Word of God, the Holy Spirit moves upon them and, and, and transforms their mind the way they think and conforms their life to that of Jesus Christ. That's what sound doctrine does. So a church that teaches and preaches sound doctrine, the people in the church ought to be spirit-filled people. They ought to be growing in, in likeness of Jesus Christ. They ought to be light and salt. They shouldn't be quarreling. They shouldn't be at each other. They shouldn't be selfish and prideful and thinking of themselves all the time. That's not Christ-like. And it's, it's carnality. It's the flesh. It's sin. And it comes from just teaching anything. In 2 Timothy 4.2, it says, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. You know, Proclaim the word. Proclaim the truth. Proclaim sound doctrine. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Sound doctrine is, is good, wise counsel. It, it brings wisdom and understanding. It helps us when we are confused or unsettled, when we're emotionally upset. It's wise counsel. When we have decisions to make, it comes from sound doctrine. And then, sound doctrine is divisive. 
In 2 John 1, 10 through 11, it says, If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, sound doctrine, do not receive him into your house. We're not even supposed to let them in the house. Why? Because they're going to bring their unsound doctrine in. It says, Or give him any greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Jesus said, If you want to follow me and be my disciple, you have to draw a line and love me more than you love anybody else. You have to love sound doctrine and not the lies of others, the mixture of others. We like the gray area because it allows us to remain in our sin. But sound doctrine causes us to step across the line, make a decision to follow Jesus in holiness and righteousness and justice and mercy and purity and completeness. I encourage you to take the Bible, study it, read it for yourself. You say, well, I don't understand parts of it. There's parts of it I don't understand. And I'll share this with you. There's seminary, profess seminary professors that argue and disagree and, and don't understand all of Scripture. Paul and Peter didn't understand everything. We don't understand everything about God. And so don't let that stop you. But get in a Bible-believing church where you hear sound doctrine proclaimed from the pulpit and read your Bible. Compare it to what you hear. Get in a, a Bible-believing church where you hear uh, sound doctrine taught in the Bible study classes, in the Sunday schools, in the missions class, even in the missions classes. And compare what you read at home with it to see if it matches up. You see... What we read in private is re should be reinforced in public. And what we hear in public ought to be reinforced in private. So study yourself so you'll know what you hear is truth or not true, where it's, there it's a sound doctrine or not. Uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will, will guide you. The Holy Spirit will be gentle with you. And so seek to know God and to understand him through sound doctrine, sound teaching, and be blessed today.